everybody. Well, I'm back in Elder Scrolls Online, and uh, it's taken me a little while, but there are a couple more collectibles that I wanted to show you. It's taken a little while to get them, like I said, because these require hours and hours of grinding or lots and lots of gold. And either way, it's still hours and hours of grinding, either because you're going to get the gold from grinding or because you got the parts to do it. The two collectibles that I'm talking about right now is number one, the pet, the Dwemer Theod Light, which is a Sentry Dwemer pet. And this one is going to be constructed out of pieces that you find in the public dungeon of Nid. I really don't know how to say it. I'll just show it to you on the map. Okay, so you want to come to this way shrine to get to the public dungeon that you need to get to do the farming for the Dun Dwemer pieces. I suggest that you bring a friend. One, because if you're low level, you're really going to need a friend to help you get through the mobs. Or two, if you're not low level and you're just farming, it's going to help you find more pieces in less amount of time. I have heard that people have been taking several days with many hours each day to find all the pieces that they need to get the Dwemer pet. So uh, having a friend along will help that process because oftentimes you may pick up a duplicate and then you and your friend can trade your duplicates. Now, unfortunately, I have not found any pieces in here and I have ground for several hours, but probably not as much as the people who are truly dedicated to the farming. So I will show you the other ways in which you can get the pet. So the other ways to obtain this pet are to look for the pieces in the guild store and I have a couple of guild stores that actually are pretty good with um, having parts and as you can see these can range anywhere from 22 to 12 you just have to keep searching now, I am using an add-on called awesome guild store in which I can just type in a search item and find it um, so I would recommend getting that add-on. So this is what they look like, little pieces of um, Dwemer Theod Light parts. Also, you can go out to the world and there are places where there are some guild store, guild traders, in case your guilds don't have these items in stock. Now this one is selling the Rin box, and this is the other way that you can get the uh, pet, is that somebody has already done all the hard work to put together all seven pieces, and it creates a Rin box like this, and you can purchase it. But you can see how much it costs to buy just one of these. Now my experience of these is that once everybody has it and it's not that hot of an item anymore, then you might be able to wait a lot longer and these prices will be coming down. So it depends on how fast you really want to get this pet. So not everybody has them and uh, there are several good places to go. And of course I went to the Morrowind Guild Traders because I figured that uh, most of the people who are selling in Morrowind might specialize in having Morrowind farmed items but there are other locations that I like to go and one of them is uh, Reaper's March to Rockla and this character has not been there before so if you have not been there before please ask a guildmate or friend who already has the way shrine to uh, let you follow them there and they can you can teleport to them and then you will learn the way shrine. And another good spot is Deshaun in um, Mornhold. 
There's guild, guild stores in here. Uh, they're pretty good. We did find some actually really good prices on some of these items in the Mournhold guild stores. Um, so it pays to shop around. So a lot of people will use the Master Merchant add-on to price their items. However, the limitation on that is that your Master Merchant will only quote the prices that are selling in the guild stores that you belong. So a lot of people will post in chat, hey, I need a price check on blah, blah, blah. And other people will quote different prices and you'll see how different they can be including some people who say they don't have any data at all. Well, that's because their guilds are not selling, or maybe they don't have any trading guilds, so they don't have a lot of good data. So once you get all of the pieces together, you will right click, get them in your inventory and right click them, and they will assemble oh, into that rune chunks. box that I showed you. You right click them like this, I, you can't see it here because I've already done it. Okay, so here is the Theodolite Dwemer pet. And he runs around with you. He's animated. It's probably one of the cuter Dwemer pets that I've seen. Because he has a little head and he looks around. And he's very decorative. And that's basically what he does. Um... He'll, he'll poke his head up and turn around, and that's basically what he looks like. Okay, so here he is placed as a piece of collectible furnishing in the apartment. And uh, he doesn't roll around or anything, but he still does this thing where he's poking his head around and he's peeking up and down. He's very, very cute. Okay, next I'm going to uh, discuss the collectible costume known as the Sixth House Robe. According to the patch notes, officially there is no Sixth House and these robes do not exist. Unofficially, the Sixth House cultists in the Forgotten Wastes have been identified with fragments of these ancient robes in their possession. If one were to acquire all seven pieces, they might be able to reform them into an intact garment. What would such a relic be worth to the right person? That is the direct quote from the patch notes. So, in order to get this item, you will need to go to the Forgotten Ways Public Dungeon. Okay, so if you want to get the pieces for this robe, you would need to head to the Valley of the Wind Way Shrine located in Bardenfell. This is going to be the Forgotten Wastes Public Dungeon, located right here off of the road. It's a little bit hidden, so you might pass by it when you're running up and down the road here, but this is the location it is in the side of these rocks and it is not to be confused with these structures up here there's uh they're not the entrance so um now this one I, I feel is a little bit easier to get some of the pieces so um say for instance i came with a friend and we we did some grinding for about four hours and we probably came away with three pieces, I would say. Um, and this is quite a large dungeon, so uh, there's several levels, and some of the levels are better than others, I think, for the farming portion. Now, of course, everybody else knows about these, so it, you could be competing with a lot of other people. Now there are several layers to this dungeon. The first layer you come into is sort of an outdoor place and there's a lot of beasts uh, and a lot of cliff racers by the way in case you need to fill up your cliff racer killing achievement this is a good spot. 
but uh, I did not have very much luck finding pieces in this location, so I'll go deeper into the dungeon and show you where I found to be a good place for farming. Okay, the second level, known as Cora Dur, when you come through the room, you want to head straight. There'll be a quest giver here. You can take that quest and finish the dungeon if you like. But for farming purposes, I just run straight through here. I kill everything in my path and head on down to the lower levels. You can see how big it is here. And I'm just in this section. So what I'm going to do is head down here and I'll be playing mostly around in this area here. I'll just to note off to the side here in this room, in this little pocket here, is a boss. In case you don't know where they are, that's one of them. Okay, in this level, the Caverns of Kolgarun is where you will do all of your grinding. You start at the top here, you go down all these ramps, and you run around in here going back and forth killing the mobs. From that archway over there, that doorway over there, there's only two there, but around here the, the columns, and then down here you can see mobs, mobs here, mobs there, uh, and a mob over here, and these are the ones that you're going to spam over and over again. Bam, kill those. Collect everything. Now, my recommendation for settings uh, for doing this is to turn on your auto loot in your settings and consolidate all of your uh, loot. You do not need to have your auto loot stolen items on. That can get you in trouble. But when you auto loot, all you do is hit E and you get everything. So you're going to get stuff that is junk. But you can sell the junk, you know, so all this stuff here, you can you can sell this junk for some gold. So either way, you're going to either get the thing that you want, which is the fragments, or some items that you can sell to help you buy the fragments. Okay, so in this lower part of the cavern, you can go here. These things, they we just killed them, they're popping up again. So this is where we would go to do a lot of the farming for this piece. And then you just pick up everything you can get. And you're just going to do this over and over and over and over again. There's a there's a mob that spawns over here of uh, cultists. Cultists spawn here. Cultist mob spawns here and then up again on that ledge. There are two that spawn here, but you know, we kind of go for the mobs just for efficiency sake. So that's it. You basically mostly will be running around down here on this level, going back and forth between all these mobs and collecting everything that they drop. Alright, so that's basically it for the farming portion of this collecting. Okay, so once you have all of your pieces for the sixth house robe, there are seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have the toolwork, fasteners, bolt, bell, hammer, shears, and thread. Once you have them in your inventory, however you obtain them, by farming, by purchasing them, you, uh, in my case, I got three pieces out of all that farming and then I had to buy the rest. So uh, you right click them and it gives you a little menu that says use, so you go ahead and use them. And then you assemble it all together. Sorry about the frame rate on that, that was awful, but I can only do it once. So then you get the Rune Box Six House Robe Costume. Alright, so in my case I'm actually going to use this because that's what this was all about. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to open it. 
and then it updates my costume collection for the sixth house robe. I'll go ahead and wear it. And it's a costume. Where is it? Sixth house, probably down under S, right? There we go. Sixth house robe. Put it on. And and there it is. Get in the light here. There's a lot of detail on it. It's embroidered and it has a, uh, a little, looks like a little um, embroidery that comes down. It's very detailed. I like it. And there's a lot of pattern difference too. So you have the embroidered look on the outer coat and then you have this uh, diamond pattern on, on the skirt. So then uh, this should be pretty cool with the dyeing. You can randomize it. You can see right here uh, the details. But this is the color that it comes in. It's very nice as it is. But of course you can color it if you have ESO Plus or you can buy the color dyes in the store. And I like to randomize it just to see some of the different options. So there are three slots for different colors here. And there you have it. Uh, that is my video for the pet and costume collectibles. I'm sorry if there was some frame rate drops and some static on the audio. I don't know what's going on with that. There's something wrong with this latest first version of OBS, I think, because it's been causing a lot of issues where it didn't used to before. So anyway, that is it. Again, I did farm the three pieces of the costume in the dungeon and I purchased the remainder from the guild stores and the pet I was not able to find any pieces of. And so I ended up buying the pet for, I think I found a good price at 90000 It could be less by now because that was uh, probably a couple of weeks ago that I purchased the pet. So that is it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful and I will see you next time.